there's one thing I hate. It's ingratitude, right? When you do something for someone else, it's nice and you're entitled for them to say, oh, thank you. I appreciate that you did that for me. Yeah. So, mm. And if you don't do that, there's something wrong with the general tone of society. And you are justified in feeling put out. Mm -hmm. you're justified in feeling. But actually... Well, and anyone who drives has this every day. You know, somebody yeah. lets you out. Exactly. You wave. You. you know, someone just holds a door for you. Say thank you. Mm. Uh, it's just, you know, part of life. And the larger the commitment the person makes, the more gratitude you're entitled to feel that you can expect. And so when you receive zero gratitude for quite a large commitment, that builds resentment. And resentment is not good for the body politic. Uh, as Aristotle describes in his politics, societies, civilizations, and states are built on the idea of friendship. Now, friendship is a sentiment, a positive sentiment, where we feel well towards each other. We feel well disposed to the other person, and therefore we're not going to act directly against their interests, and we're going to show them the kind of respect and recognition that they feel might be appropriate to receive. Mm -hmm. They do that to make sure that everyone feels good about things. Hi folks, sorry to interrupt the video, but I just want to direct your attention to the aesthetics range of merch that we have on the store. These are beautiful images that I think work really well as posters or mugs. So if you want to support us, going over to the merch store at shop.loadseater.com is easily the best way other than signing up on the website. And so when, for example, you get a Palestinian activist who is like, oh, you're dropping free food to the Palestinians who are starving because Israel are bombing them. This food sucks. You start thinking, okay, well, hang on. I thought you were starving. I thought this, you know, we, we, I, I imagine the people who dropped this food went a little bit out of their way to do it. And the response is, this is the worst food I've ever eaten, which I think is actually what he physically So said. lots of young American men put themselves through absolute hell. A piece of them. In yeah. order to get a career where they eat that all the time. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, just everything here is horrible. I was forced to eat it because nothing else is here. Like, this isn't about your enjoyment. This is making sure you don't starve if you to were death. you genuinely starving, and you were a Muslim in Palestine, genuinely starving, you would eat anything. You would think, wouldn't you? Mm. Even pork. Yeah. Mm. I mean, you know, the, the, the community note on this is like, hang on a second, this is what the American military eats. Uh, it's not terrible. I've eaten, yeah, my, my dad was in the forces. I've eaten the canned uh, apple pies that you get. Delicious. All oh, right, with a bit of canned custard. Um, they're not delicious, but it's 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 fine. But I wasn't starving, and uh, <laughs> I had to eat because my dad didn't want to cook. No, I'm joking. Um, and so this is just it. It's like, what are you expecting? You know, people start making memes about it. It's like, oh yeah, where's <laughs> where's my salt based steak? <laughs> Say the starving Gazans, and it makes you just think, why why is this? Uh, but that's quite remote. That's quite far away. Uh, let's let's bring it a bit close to home. I really hated this. I really hated this. So you're allowed to come and live in Britain and you're a Muslim. And so you're totally appreciative of them giving you access to all of the wonderful things we had in Britain and the economic life. So you go and get a job and then you decide, oh, it's Ramadan. I'm not going to eat. And so you go and complain at this kafar for eating Ramadan. Look at this kufar. Everybody's on Ramadan. I know, I actually feel bad for eating. <laughs> and this guy's, I'm glad to put it so right in on. This guy's stuff no, in his face. Up, bro, up, up. <laughs> Listen to the tone of voice of the guy holding the camera. You, you don't have any right to talk to this guy in that way. No. Yeah. At all. But, but why? I mean, you asked, mentioned earlier evolutionary psychology. From, from that perspective, why would you think he would be polite to him? Well, um, hmm. I'm not an evolution. Well, I mean, why, why would you tell me? So you, I mean, this is group selection. This is a. Uh, this is. I don't know if I'm allowed to say it. This is the I word. You know, this is. This is. This is what. It doesn't help you to be nice. What the the group that dominates in according to computer models in terms of group selection is the group that is internally cooperative and externally hostile, hmm. and that man is the enemy. And you are, your purpose is to pass on your, your genes uh, at the individual <laughs> level, of course, uh, but also at the group level. Mm -hmm. How in prehistory did we do that? We go in, we take the land, we kill the men, we impregnate whatever the women. Um, that's, that's, that's how you operate. And that man is part of a different group, 
And what you need to do is undermine the solidarity of that group, undermine the sense of purpose, undermine the sense of something eternal and something greater, humiliate them, um, you know, humiliate their women, do everything you can to drive them out, drive them out so that you can expand more and more and more. So in, in this, are you seeing an expression of hard-coded gene needs? Yes. That are manifesting yeah, absolutely. In interaction. Yeah. So that 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 Muslim, I assume, uh, Muslim uh, cameraman is um, he's going to be. First of all, he will have been under harsh Darwinian selection pressures for longer than us. So we're evolved to be group selected. We're evolved to be conservative. We're evolved to be uh, uh, nationalistic and whatever. And these these things correlate with genetic health. Um, and they all co-correlate into a kind of fitness factor. We've had, by 1880, we had 10% child mortality. By 1880, where he's from, it would have been 50%. So the, the, you're going to have a people that are basically more evolved to real life, more evolved to harsh Darwinian conditions. And of course, those people are therefore going to be higher in ethnocentric feeling. Um, also, in that, uh, in that kind of context, uh, they engage in... Uh, cousin marriage and things like this, mm. um, which helps to elevate a sense of tribalism and a sense of outsider, insider, and whatever. This is a person who is genetically very different from him. He's competing with him within the white working class, whatever, and you're expanding into his territory, and he humiliated him. Yeah, and, that, you can, and, that and you can see this just by kindly, the... Kindly man, yeah. who, who, who when uh, 30, 40 years ago, when we hadn't had 40 years of being got at and humiliated by our own government, and being by our own individualistic government and told and told that you can't look up for your own interests, you can't look out for your group, you should be ashamed, would have just punched him in the face. Mm. Um, but but the, I mean, I remember when I was at school and they were on Ramadan, I mean, we used to, I remember trying to persuade them to eat crisps, you know, at lunchtime. And you had Brannigan's crisps <laughs> in those days. I was fortunate enough to not get to school with Muslims. Brannigan's crisps, pork and apple. Yeah. And eventually I managed to persuade my friend Tariq Basra Hello, if you're watching, um, to, to eat a pork and apple crisp. And he goes, Oh, such bad things are going to happen when I die, man. Um, but <laughs> yeah. Pork and apple flavoring, stuff, stuff the sucks pig really anywhere dead. near it. But anyway, that's, that's, yes. that's, that's, the, that's, the, that's what he's doing. So it's completely understandable. Ungrateful, grateful, irrelevant. What's relevant is that you well, win, that you beat, that you it's, overcome. It's not irrelevant because that's how this sort of chap is going to be looking at these things. And so he is in a position where there is a person here who has the high hand over him and he has no recourse. And this is why you can see he's smiling. He's, oh, ha, 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 this is going to be funny. But you can see by the, the body language, look at him. He is a defeated man, mm. chest in, sunken down, hunched over, looking down, not even looking up at the person who is making this commandment of him, calling him a kufar, part of the out group. This, this is important to a person like him because what he's expecting is some sort of mutual consideration. He lives in a society of friends. And until right now... Hopefully he, this will make him and people like him understand that this is not the situation that yes, we have. That's... You have a high-trust society if that society is homogenous. Mm -hmm. That is a society of friends. You know, the research on friends mm -hmm. literally indicates that two friends, good friends, are more genetically similar than two random strangers from the same society. So why do you have friends? It's an indirect way of passing on your genes. That's why you have friends. Well, uh, just, to, just to get away from the uh, cold science of it, because I, I'm not saying you're wrong or anything like that, obviously, but um, I think it might be less persuasive to a man like him because this, I think, might be going over his head a little bit. Um, but the point is, you can see here who is acting upon the other and who is showing consideration to the other and who belongs and who doesn't belong and who is being bullied which is why everyone took this as being bullied, which, and like I said, I'm, I'm, I'm sure you're completely correct on all of this, but it's the, the, the different levels of addressing this. And that's, this is the way that I wanted to approach this one, because I think this is where we can find genuine justification on a moral level. So, you know, I don't have to give you consideration back. And that's why this guy should have just looked him in the eye and gone, what? Yeah. He should have just looked him straight in the face and made an issue out of it. But he didn't want to because, of course, he doesn't feel supported by his establishment. Well, if it was me, I would have bought him bacon sandwiches. All yeah, I would, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But, um, but what can you do? Anyway, so uh, the next one is this chap who I think is hilarious. <clears throat> he looks very much like an extra from Four Lions, but I'm, I'm is assured. This, is this genuine? Is, 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 that a, is that a bit? No, I don't think it's a bit because there are other videos of him talking about other things. But, um, but the reason that the Palestinians are losing to Israel is because there are queer people 
pro-Palestinian protests. Wait, wait. So that the people who throw gays off roofs are queer? No, uh, the people who support the people who throw gays off roofs are queer. Strangely, right. uh, gay people are at Palestine protests, and in therefore the God in the West, and therefore God is punishing the Palestinian people. Yes, because they have, without meaning to, induced the support of gays. Yes, which is uh, a certain level of ingratitude that perhaps the people who are protesting in favor of Palestine might yes. sh- might want to be aware of. So I, I I don't want to go down that rabbit hole now because yeah. it would be too long, but I'll have to ask you after the show because if you are a gay person protesting in favor of people who throw gays off roofs, you're several layers down on the whole gene replication thing. Mm. We'll go there now. But, uh, but I, again, you can't help but feel that there's a certain lack of gratitude, right? So hang on a second. Why are these people in our society? If our society is based on friendship, if our society, because it's totally plausible to have immigrants come here yeah. who are well disposed to this place, well disposed to the people, and who form those bonds of friendship and act in the interests of the people yeah. around them, don't make the people around them comfortable and integrate, get married into the society, and then they have children who are a part of the society in them, and life goes on and everything's fine. Well, I, I don't know, but I'd imagine that's possibly the free houses and money might be a factor. Well, we'll get onto the free houses and money in a moment, because why do they exist? Well, the answer is, of course, social contractism. Now, Britain is not a social contract society. Britain is an ancient and sentimental society. Uh, But when you have the Blair order that's being imposed on us, the underlying philosophical principle of it is that everyone deserves the same recognition. Uh, And so if you have an imbalance in recognition, well, that means that the people who have more power need to be lowered and the people who have less power need to be raised. And so you end up in a situation where the state is going to act in a certain way towards certain groups of people, regardless of how they behave. Now, this is the thing that everyone hates when they see something like this. A Muslim immigrant who goes to Germany and says, you are helpless. I conquered your land. I belong to the system. Everything belongs to me. Everything is under my feet, waving around a German passport. I mean, you know, he's, he's honest, though. Oh, he's very honest. He's very honest. But in, um, in a pre-modern world, that person would find themselves in a lot of trouble. Mm -hmm. Uh, However, in a modern world, they have rights. Yeah. Individual, unbreakable rights. And he has the unbreakable right to have that German passport now and to mock as many Germans as he likes and show as much ingratitude as he cares to. And they have no recourse whatsoever. But he's won a victory, isn't he? So, exactly. Yeah. And he's not the only one. I mean, this, when, uh, when you win a victory, you exult in it. Yes. And again, Ed, to, to your point, this uh, very attractive lady, AFD, look what I have here, fresh from the federal office in Berlin. It's over. You can't deport me anymore. I have many children. They will all have a German passport. She, she's got a lot of slap, though. She does. Yeah. I'm not here to judge her looks, really. Yes. Um, I'm just saying, look at the attitude. Yeah. And this it's is the, not true that she can't be deported. It just requires a higher level of will to be applied. That is true. It requires a, cha- a, cha- a fundamental change <clears throat> in what the ruling class think. Exactly. And that could happen, though. But the, the yeah. thing that they would have to stop thinking is that the social contract is a valid method towards society. Because, of course, it's not. What they would have to return to is the Aristotelian friendship society, where we judge people on how they intend and how they operate uh, with us. Mm. And if they act in this way, they're not our friends. And if you fail the test of friendship, you get deported. That needs to be the new standard. Because, I mean, this is just something that is insufferable. Everyone might be familiar with the container migrant. Uh, these families are forced to live in shipping containers. Now, you might think, wow, that's a bit harsh. Except that actually they were refurbished into flats and given to them. So, so, so the subheading is coming here is mental torture. Aren't these people who are supposed to be fleeing well, certain we all, death? We all know that that is a well, nonsense. yes, yes. I mean, there we, are people that flee certain death. That those yes. things exist, and that's very, very rare. Let, let's watch a bit of this very quickly, actually. But from the temporary, it became a long term thing. The Union Council have said that this is one of the ways in which they're trying to tackle a homeless crisis on their hands. No. You know, perhaps a lot of people say it's, it's better than being on the street. Oh, yeah, we are just one step close to being in the street. People in the street are getting air. We are in a box. We're in a container. Containers for, not for human beings. It's for you to storage things. 
you get a sense just there how difficult it is for you. I, know. I had an Uber driver the other day, mm -hmm. very intelligent man. Uh, if you're out there, Solomon, it was fascinating talking to you, um, from Ghana. Mm -hmm. And he told me he was brought up in a one-room yep. house with a curtain down the middle. His parents slept on one side. His, him and his five siblings slept on the other. Mm -hmm. And that guy went into the army, didn't complain, didn't complain about it. He's like, that's home. That's just how you live. Yeah. One-room house, no running water, no nothing. Curtain down the middle for a bit of privacy, or whatever, uh, and that seems safe. And they are complaining about a ha essentially a small house yeah. with running water, with all mock cons, yeah. with everything, compared to what they would be living in in Somalia or wherever it is. She is from, from Somalia. Uh, I, I've lived in worse places than that. And I had a Somali Uber driver the other day as well. Similarly, very intelligent but, guy, and he's, saying, he's expressing his disbelief. He's saying, I've never had a bit of racism here, never. But this is the point, right? She feels entitled to more than this because the social contract guarantees a certain standard of living. She's not appreciative that the British public are paying for her to live in a house in London. I mean, I've lived in worse places than that, and I had to pay for the privilege myself. She is getting that money from. And look at look at the face. Look at her expression. Utter I'm not having this. Utter I'm not having this. These people have failed the test of friendship, and as far as I'm concerned, they can all go. I can't take it. It drives me mad. But also, it's entirely it's entirely disingenuous. This idea that you. If you are genuinely fleeing persecution, She's you will obviously not. You go to the next safe country. Yep. You don't go to the best country or the richest country. <laughs> if you did, the, why would you come here? Or the country. Well, exactly. <laughs> um, or the, uh, maybe, maybe, we, maybe we should flee the other way around. Yeah, exactly. I'm, I'm sure, I'm sure that, it, that no one, no one in Somaliland is going to say my research is racist. <laughs> I, I, I've, I've corresponded. <laughs> I've corresponded with psychologists from Somaliland about trying to get the IQ differences between Somalia and Somaliland. Oh yeah, I'm genuinely interested in it because I think that the Somalilanders in the north will probably have higher IQ, which is why they have a functioning state. Are they the British ones? That's the British ones. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, a fundamental yeah, yeah. level. Yeah, the yeah, Italian yeah. was the south. Yeah, yeah. There's some yeah. fundamental way I think in which they via via osmosis absorb a certain. Do, do they have a different admixture by any chance? Yeah, they're more Arabized. Right, so again. Why um, do we fix everything we touch? Oh, you always have to. Do it on my, oh. <laughs> anyway, the, the, but this 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 is the this is the point though, isn't it? Like you can tell that these people have come here on a lie, and they're totally ungrateful for all of the things that your hard work are providing for you. <laughs> and it's just insufferable, and I can't take it. And so I'm very, I'm very very tired of it. And so this was just. I mean, we're going to listen to this, and I realize that this is going to be very annoying. Yeah. But we're going to have to grit our teeth. I embrace My perception is that they don't care about us. They really, truly don't care about us. That's how I feel. I feel, I feel that they don't care about us. And, and I've been talking about, um, you know, I'm coming up to retirement. And, um, and I keep on saying I'm giving the NHS two more years of my life. In this country, I reckon, two more years because I just don't think that this country really values us. I don't think they deserve us. <laughs> That's the first thing. But um, I can't, I don't feel I've got, you know, the energy to keep on resisting all of this stuff all of the time. You know, you talk about, we talk about systemic racism and systemic racism is where there are systems, where there are structures, policies and processes that create unfair advantage for one group of people and unfair disadvantage for another group of people, usually people of color, all right? And we talk about addressing uh, systemic racism and it's, it's quite covert, all right? Um, but this is overt, in the open, you know, in your face. <laughs> Yeah. And if they can't, it yeah. does make you wonder because if, if if the leaders of this country can't call that out when it's in your face, when it's obvious, when they prevaricate, when they continue to take money from someone who does this, what hope does it does it give people of colour? We are not doing enough, clearly. What what racism is this they experience? What racism is this? Uh, some chap didn't like Diane Abbott, and so he said. It doesn't make me hate all black women, but I really do hate Diane Abbott. So he did make it clear that he doesn't hate all black women. Yeah, but that doesn't matter. Did he get jailed for that? Or no, he yet, was or? he was one of the Conservative Party's uh, biggest donor, 
Oh, so okay. unsurprisingly, the Conservatives like that we can't. We found, finally found someone we actually can't throw under the bus, and it's the we're the biggest donor to the party. Um, but the but the point is to come on like it feels like they don't value us. Like <sighs> okay, you know, I, it, it probably does feel that way, doesn't it? You know, you don't don't feel very valued. You don't feel very valued. We've made one of you prime minister. Yeah, uh, and some countries wouldn't tolerate that. No. I mean, if we go back, India would. Well, I was just about to say, you go, you, you go back to was it two thousand and four, two thousand and five, and there was a fair election. Uh, Sonia Gandhi was the leader of the Congress Party. Everybody knew if Sonia Gandhi wins, then Sonia Gandhi is prime minister. Sonia Gandhi is ethnically Italian. She's integrated. She speaks fluent Hindi, whatever. Um, and they won fair and square. And then the BJP, who are now in power in India, the Nationalist Party, just said, no, no, no. This is a national disgrace. It's a national disgrace. That a foreigner should be part, uh, running the country, and Sonia Gandhi's husband, of course, was assassinated, and and she and she realised, look, India is not as safe as some other countries, and she said, my inner voice tells yeah. me. That's what she said. It's an interesting phrase she used. My inner voice. Wait, tells when, me. when was this said? Two thousand four. That is five. A, that is a superb example. I, I'm, I'm surprised I didn't know that. Yeah, I didn't know about this either. That's f- no, I had no idea. Well, why did you mention India for them? Because I just knew they wouldn't take it. No, well, I've met they, many they, Indians. They, they right. take it and, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, didn't. I didn't know there'd be. Yes. I, yeah, I know. I've met many Indians. I just didn't know there'd be an, an actual example. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, well, so, and so then there was a case kind of in a, point. A pub, yeah. It was the symbolism of it. There was a puppet prime minister, Mr. Singh. Yeah. And so I, I guess that there was probably a degree to which Sonia Gandhi was putting the string behind the scenes, you know. But, yes. but, but uh, yeah, they just would not take it. It's like we are Indians. We are an ethnic group. We are. We are well, lots of ethnic groups. Yeah. We are. We are the Indians, and we are not bloody having this and and there was no resistance even in victorian england we we voted the, the those that could vote uh, v- voted in benjamin disraeli despite mm. him being a ethnically jewish okay convert to christianity but ethnically jewish and rishi said rishi like we'll lose but he's not going to lose because he's ethnically indian he's going to lose yeah. because he's crap yeah but, no, but, yes, um, true. which is you know but I, I don't even remember us having the conversation of of, yeah. of you know you, you could have had the talking heads on the mainstream media just before rishi sunak was installed saying well look um the indians didn't do this in 2004 um you know is, is there some question about why we would do this but no it's n- none of this is reciprocal in any way well no i mean yes. it's it would have, I mean, it has been in the past. I mean, for example, in the 92 election, the, <coughs> conser- the Conservatives put up a candidate, a black man, I forget his name, um, in, in Cheltenham, which was a safe Conservative seat. And everyone think how different it was in 92. You had people voting that were born in like 1910. And, 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 they, and, they, and they wrote to the local newspaper <laughs> saying, I was vote Conservative all my life. I'm voting Lib Dem. I'm voting against the invader. And the, uh, the Liberal Democrat candidate, he... he white guy, of course, he played to this. And he actually said, vote for your local candidates. And everyone knew what he meant. Uh, and of course, they lost, they lost one of the safest seats in the country. Hmm. So yeah, the, uh, the point behind this is just, I'm very tired of the way that we're talked to by these people and the lack of respect that we're given. And I'm just done with it. Hi folks, thanks for watching. If you'd like to support us, go to lotuseats.com and sign up for £5 a month because of course we're demonetized on YouTube. But this gives us the freedom to do things like Lads Hour, which is where five of us sit around and talk about whatever subject we feel like. I've heard it described accurately as The View for Men, which I think is a ringing endorsement. And if you want further updates from us, you can go and follow our Twitter account, which is loadseaters underscore com.